people and you know you see them at church but it rough is in me i guess that's something all of us have to work on for me personally um i guess being outside of church space and going to university obviously i have to mix and mingle with people um but that don't really affect me as much like the whole friendship thing it don't really affect me as much i don't know why i i think I it's just I think I'm, I'm I'm not that social. <laughs> to say I have this large group of people, and usually the type of people that Daniel is talking about, they're more outgoing. So I don't think my, my personality would mesh with their personality. So for me, it's not really that big of an issue. But the relationship part, that is that is more what kind of sting me. Is it because hey, everything sting me, everything sting me, it rough, everything sting it me, rough. people, everything sting me. Every there's nothing that I don't get stung from. I get sting from everything. Like even all the day, I know you know. I'm not saying you. <laughs> like can't I just do what I want to do? I mean, my life, I get you. Ministry does this. It makes sense, but. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you really just you, you you know there's a song that goes it's called you win right and it says um um I don't want to break free I just want to be me make this my reality it, it, in the in the in the beginning of the song it's like she's she's actually saying oh she'll fight between her flesh and the spirit and it's just a big war between what she wants to do and what she knows is right mm -hmm. and it's like she's saying to God God listen. Me don't want to be free. Me don't want to be redeemed. I'm fine. No, just I just want to be myself. Mm -hmm. What my, what my heart is leading me to do. I, I just want to do that. I don't want to have to think about what people are gonna think, what people are gonna say, etc. And people who are Christians in general, and especially people who are placed on a pedestal because of what they do for Christ, are often in that situation where they're fighting a war. Whether it be, um, it doesn't matter what it is, relationships friendships whatever it is you're often found fighting between what you know is right and what you, sh you, you what you want to do yeah. and it's not getting you know and that's, it's not gonna fight. end oh yeah just when you the think outcome that you will be something. different though the fight yeah. will never end but the outcome will change yeah. based on your relationship with god whoever wins whether it's your flesh or the spirit whichever one wins that is a reflection of how close you are to christ right Right, pretty much. Um, for me, I began spoke about the friendship thing. Personally, for me, the friendship thing is is an as I must say, everything sting me. I must say that I mean I am literally a social butterfly. I am not introverted in any sense. I am an outgoing person. I must say outgoing. I mean, I mean daredevil, but I mean I am I am the socialite, you know, of the friend group or whatever. Right. So me love excitement. You understand me? Who are we friends? <laughs> I don't, honestly don't know how this dynamic works. <laughs> Somebody asked me that the other day. Oh, we are wow, both like friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not other people. They were just oh. asking. They're like, how does it work? Your personality Your don't make sense to me. Three different. <laughs> very different. We're, we're, we are so different. Honestly. Facts. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm very very social. People, I'm not even. I'm not gonna lie. Parties, they are very attractive to me. Um, carnival, not very, to me. very attractive. Oh, my to me. look good in a whatever. My nails look good. That's true. I've no, I mean, no. <laughs> if I wasn't a Christian, I still wouldn't look good. Like in the carnival outfit, my nah. And then here's but the I'm thing with me, me, I, I, I dreamt of dressing, of getting dressed up in feathers and everything, and I, I wanted all of that to be out in the road, jarrett and all sorts of things because I can't dance. that because based on <laughs> all the other things, me. you know, because of the type of person <laughs> that I am and what I enjoy, I, the conflict is really turned up for me. So how do you deal with that? Yeah. 
Well, number one is surround. What I try to do is surround myself with people who are like-minded. And I know that probably might sound cliche, but what I mean when I say that is people who are trying to go in the same direction as I am. Well, the whole we are trying to go the same place in the sense that all of us are trying to make it to heaven all of us are trying to get to that ultimate place with Christ where we are walking with him and people look at us and see him that's where all of us are I trying have to a get tip. so I have a tip. Mm -hmm. how about you feed your social life personality in a different direction so mm -hmm. don't, don't hide your, your candlestick because that's what it does if you don't who you are as a person mm -hmm. so some old friends are like sit down and be quiet and Check yourself and sit on a back bench and just shut up and mm -hmm. just listen to the past or whatever. But you can feed your 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 natural persona for being a social butterfly in a different direction. Mm -hmm. So like what? You like <laughs> this. So there are lots of people that are watching right now. You have to say, yo, I'm the same as Daniel. They can. They own a YouTube channel. Chat. People will listen to you. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you do as a socialite? What else? That's, that's, why, that's, that's why that's why it's, she it's, said it's, it's, I guess what she said about you know, um, being with people who are like minded. Um and especially there's a lot of other socialites in the Join church a who are Adventist uh, Christians. Oh I know a group. You know, you can find people. I know a group. Who, there's a group of young people <clears throat> that would meet together and just have them like it, it, their group is bigger than us by far. So that's for like really social people. Like they wanna go out together, do things. It's like the production team. Or so, production team, but like real friends. A trick to it. We're real friends, but not like <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, without a come and go like that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanna make sure you do. <laughs> she yeah, gets it, she gets because it. Because <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the, ti the, the the tip is to channel your socialite energy just in a different way. Yes. And a way you can do that is just bounce around people who are who are who are like minded, who are like you, and who right. enjoy doing you know social stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know that's simple, honestly. But you know it it can be done. It's something that I'm working on personally. You know, it's, some, it's literally a journey that I am trotting right now, literally in my life, right? Yes. I just wanted to jump in on the whole friendship thing um, and say, I think, I personally think you can be friends with anybody. You can hear be. Hear me out, right? You can be. Not um, anybody. No, hear me out, hear me out. I think you Not can be, <laughs> well, well, um, I think you can be friends with people who respect what you are trying to accomplish yeah, make them respect it so that so so there you know there are some people who they have contrary beliefs to you whatever that is and they simply do not respect your beliefs and so like the example she gave earlier like abigail hypothetic abigail is that a word hypothetic yeah i don't know i've never heard that in my life but i'm using it anyway <laughs> Right? Hypothetical Abigail. I don't know. You y'all get the point, right? That Abigail. <laughs> All right. Not um, that Abigail, but a made up Abigail. The made up Abigail. <laughs> right? That's not a friend that you want to keep around because evidently that friend doesn't respect that you don't want to go clubbing on a Friday night. Or at all. <laughs> you get me? So so that friend should respect you in in the sense that okay they want to go clubbing on a friday night go ahead well not really go ahead because we're not really trying to encourage you to do that but you know that's what you're gonna do on a friday night cool sunday now when sunday come and they're not doing anything let's go watch a movie let's go play some games you know so that quality time is still fulfilled does it's a yeah, simple it's a simple matter of does your friend respect what you are trying to do um and that's just it for me. If if there's mutual respect, we good. It makes sense. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another thing too. You have to, you know, the, the respect has to be there. If them know, if them disregard the fact that you're a Christian and you have certain values, then it really doesn't make no sense. Um, also, you have to make them respect you too. In the sense that, um, and my mother would always say these things to me. You, you have to, you have to show them something. When I say that, I mean, you can't be 
you have to be careful around people who are not of this of like of like you have to be careful around anybody everybody but especially those who are outside of the fold remember the ultimate goal is to get them in we have to be careful of what we're showing them or who we are to them you understand mm -hmm. the message so we have to make them respect we so certain things them can't catch you at because how are we gonna go to the club with them on hey. friday night that is no no that and is then, big. And then come back like, them no. come church like yo on a personal on a personal note brother like when i was in high school my high school friends you see me love them to death to this day i love all of them um but i realized that because of decisions i made when i was that leslie and the younger Leslie, and like you know high school leslie there are things i did that what did it do not nothing too deep but when i get it we don't even forget about that <laughs> but it was like because of those things after i was like really intentional with god and everything and my life changed them just them never really took it too serious because they would have seen me before that so you have to that point right there you have to be very careful about the things that you are caught doing facts so yeah that's that um that's the friendship aspects of things um the relationship aspects of things boy The relationship aspects of things, um, and it's, part two. it's, this video of ours gonna, was already, um, already gonna be broken up into <laughs> part two anyway. So, yeah, um, the relationship aspects of things, no, boy, it boils down to respect. It boils down to respect. <laughs> say no, it does. No, say what you say. Yeah, say what you say. Yeah, yeah. I just want to the relationship it. aspect of it, it does boil down to respect. You have to deal with somebody or whoever you want to be in a relationship with. They have to respect your principles and boundaries. That's where I was going. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with. Yeah, I, hold I, on. I, I feel I, like there's more to it than just respect. No, I'm not. I'm okay. saying. No. Oh, I probably should not have said it all. It all boils down to respect <laughs> is a factor. How about that? Okay. But it's not everything. I'm just trying to understand what you're saying because what that sounds like to me is no. There's, there's no compromise enough. with your faith when it comes to relationships, you know. Huh? Like at all? That there's no no like like when you said with the friendship thing and you're like, yeah, you can still be friends if whatever. Mm -hmm. We can't still be friends if be in the relationship if. Okay. We don't we're not aligned. Yeah, we're not exactly. aligned. Right, right. That's, that's why. That's why. Because what you said oh. sounded like I, oh, yeah, I could yeah. be with an atheist. <laughs> Once he respects <laughs> that I go to church exactly. on Sabbath and that I do this exactly. and that, isn't it? So, so it's more. It's a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to relationships, this person. All right. Yo, I want to talk about something that I'm recently going through. I mean, nobody know where you're talking about this. Are you sure? Or are you sure? Yeah. Okay, can I just say something before yeah, I go? Cool. Yeah, cool. um, the thing with the thing with relationships is, right? Um, so I personally believe that a lot of times we go into relationships because oh, I like that person here, so yeah, I'm gonna do with them. But I think it's a lot more than that. Um, it takes Sorry. a lot to when you're in ministry, just to tie this back to ministry, you can't just do that. You like somebody or them when you're me, Christian. whatever. When you're, yeah, right. to be honest, when you're a Christian, overall. You can't just say, "Oh, I like somebody. He likes me. I'm gonna. We're gonna end up in a. It can't work." So right, there, it takes a lot of prayer and supplication, um, even in the beginning of our relationship. Like not just if you're gonna get married or whatever the case is, because it doesn't make sense. You spend so much time with a person, and then God is just like, "Nah," and you have to come out to all of that again. Um, oh, and I, I think some of us kind of take that for granted because when I realize it. Whatever God is leading us to is the ultimate, is the best. Um, and sometimes we miss out on that because we're just kind of like, do do oh, I like that person here. Yeah. And then that person could possibly lead you away from God. It's, it could be a lot of things. So it's really key to check him, as in God, <laughs> first, before we really are looking at Check through. him. <laughs> but God, God is the him. him yeah, yeah, he's the him. Um, before we're really trying to get into like, serious relationships because we can waste a lot of time we could end up with less heartbreak just a lot of things so yeah yeah um you have to be really really careful about those things because relationships are intimate they're intimate relationships they're not like a regular friendship or something this is you this is what these are in christian context here it's one and one right it's just 
the two of you and you guys share certain things on, uh, on, on a deeper level and you can't dance to the devil in that instance especially if you're a Christian especially if you are literally an ambassador for God you cannot compromise on certain things as Abigail said you always either have all our eggs them right here so and we agree say yes to the egg them there and if you agree say one of the egg them not in the basket it can go work so that's another thing people who are christians and people who minister we can't just be willy-nilly we have to be intentional literally about everything everything and it is rough and a lot of people don't see that either when we step on when <laughs> when i go on she in when somebody abigail probably step into amars or wherever people shop right when you go into i don't know right when you go to a restaurant you have to think about all right hmm, what am i gonna buy am i if it is is this is this is this um what should i say is this is this um moet gonna paint a bad picture of me is is this dress gonna paint a, a, a bad That's picture a of me why <laughs> Is this rare nephew gonna paint a bad picture of me? What picture is that gonna paint? Is what what picture is this hairstyle gonna paint? As sad as that might sound, that is also true. We have to take into consideration so many different things because people are literally watching for every. Oh, yeah, people are watching us. <laughs> people watch us Christians overall. People who are in ministry worse, they watch you and you are looked at twenty four seven. I have to be intentional about every single thing, and that. But wait, but wait, <laughs> me, watching this, me watching this, but we just leave them high and dry, you see me? But if there's a young person watching and they want them like, yo, this not so good, you see They don't want to go into ministry because of this it. Not, uh, Abigail said it earlier, you know, the sacrifice is worth it. Um, And I think, tell us why it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, because, it's because if you say that, what what that mean? Um, yeah, because first of all, I don't get the opportunities where we get for the virtual church, and right? I get you, whatever. Here's my thing here's my thing with that. Um, ministry is tied to God. Um, you go into ministry because of God, or the, the goal the, or the reason for which you go into ministry should be because of God mm -hmm. and to further His cause. That is our mandate as human beings. That's what we were, that's what we were created for, mm -hmm. right? That's what that's why we're here. And so, yeah, greater than really any other sacrifice that you could make. So you really have to look at it and you have to count. It's really, you, you have to prioritize. Honestly, this is what you were called to do. Yeah. And when you look at it, the things that you are chasing or the things that are coming, or the, the things that are chasing you, the things that seem fleeting to you and that you would have to give up for ministry. How long will those things even last anyway? How important are they to your soul salvation? What is important to you? You have to prioritize at the end of the day. I am not saying this because it is simple. I am not saying this because I have arrived. I'm saying it because it's true. And I don't want that at the end of this video, anybody who can probably sing or preach or is considering to go into ministry will be turned away because of it. No, it is pretty difficult. And none of us, and that's why we're making this video, because a lot of people think that ministry is simple a lot of people think that yeah man as i go into this you know everything best is just like a run me down and <laughs> you know a lot of people think that and have a misconception and then when they get into it and they realize what it's really about they drop the ball you know what i mean Malcolm? um so this video is really to just show you the truth about it but to understand that anything outside of what you are called to do is literally not worth it anyway Anything that falls outside of what God would have called you to do, you know, in a worst, either way. So that is why the sacrifice is always greater because you know that when you're doing things for God, you literally cannot go wrong when the intention is right. Yeah, um, just to add to that too, ultimately, um, I, I maybe this is, I don't know if this is a me thing, but ultimately, because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for me, I am forever indebted to him and i want to do what he has called me to do i want to do my best for him um added to that you know in just a worldly kind of way um there's that text seek ye first the kingdom of god and all and his righteousness and, and all, all these things, things shall be added unto you um it's 
it's not always simple um but the reality is when you put god first he will come through for you and it may take it may take time sometimes you, you, you know the wilderness and you wonder what really i'm going <laughs> you know what i'm saying oh we we wilderness and together boo you know what i'm saying but, like a blip, thirsty and but, <laughs> but um he's gonna come through for you at the end of the day and i'd rather live a life knowing that i am fulfilling his purpose for my life rather than not also you have to remember that when you're on this mission it not got easy like consider the fact we that never told you that it would have been right easy. consider the fact that when jesus was here he was the son of god right and he was on the work the people them did have persecute him same way you see me same thing for his followers after he died um paul and them man hey them they man they suffer you know they suffer and they die them man they go the... through it but at the end of the day even if it may be tough sometimes the end goal we're gonna make it to heaven and i think that's just like the biggest um motivation yeah you also have a call the cost is me what it, what are you what are you gaining versus what you're losing any closing words abigail for me what keeps me going despite all the difficulties that we would have mentioned is that word purpose purpose ministry adds purpose in your life because otherwise i'd just be living you see me right. i just want to get a job be rich and then what right right that's always my question you and your purpose, then yeah. what when i look at my counterparts that don't have this relationship with god i see partying and whatever and then when they go home they're depressed sometimes what you see on instagram is not what yeah. what it is you know they're battling with so much and they don't know where to filter it through i mean we're going through the same struggles as really the young people we are going the same courses we're struggling with the same things but the difference between me and them is that i filter all my frustration on one source so at the end of it when i ball it on with god and i can trust that person and you know i'm okay at the end of it and um, i just know that my life is directed in, in one way and that is to please god right. so that's that's why i continue um the last thing is that ministry especially for christians it as i was i was supposed to say this in the beginning it gives you a responsibility it's an added responsibility on top of every christian's mandate is to go ye into all the world and make disciples ministry gives you a platform and you are now responsible for yourself and others as much as they might not want to admit it you're responsible for other people as well and sometimes when your spiritual life your personal spiritual life in and of itself is lacking you still find yourself singing you still find yourself preaching you still find yourself doing praise dances whatever you whatever it is that you do ministry is that anchor <laughs> ministry is that anchor to God that's that can hold true when your spiritual life is suffering mm -hmm. so even when you're you're not really like yeah go church and you're not really dead eh? the responsibility that you have and what God is holding you accountable to is what's keeping you but that's not enough it's not it's not right enough. it's not but 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 it's better than being out of the door completely it keeps a foot in the door they're here like there's the door and there's outside if you're and warm, sometimes you're just as bad and sometimes ministry i think, ministry I think if you're lukewarm jam, you're just as bad that's what i think because agreed. either way you're going to hell sorry oh, it sounds harsh awesome. but if you're not in it and you're sitting in church and you're not in it you're still in the same faith as a person where oh completely at, at least, <laughs> at least no i know. no that's absolutely true mm -hmm. i think what daniel is getting at is that there are days, the reality is that there may be a day when you get up. This happened to me like Sabbath. <laughs> Sabbath? Yeah. When you get up, and you're just out of it. Like you just, you just can't find it. But you're still doing it. Uh, yeah. You get me? Um, and through that, God can it use, you. God can use that you. very thing to, to still save touch you. you. To save and in you. that moment, you're kind of, whoa. Yeah, man, all right there again you get me so it's not that we're saying 
be lukewarm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. Like, you definitely need to be on a continuous journey with God. You need to be walking with Him daily while I am talking to myself. But even on the days when you know feel it, you still do it because you know you have that responsibility. Right. And that's keeping you closer to God. So yeah guys, that's basically that for the truths of ministry and what it looks like um, from the excuse me, from the insider's point of view. If you are somebody who is here, probably not necessarily involved, involved well not once you're a Christian, you're you're involved in some sort of ministry. If you are a true Christian, you are involved in some sort of ministry. But for you know persons who are not necessarily seeing things from this point of view, I just want to use this as an opportunity to speak for other ministers out there be be graceful to us we are flesh and bone as well and we do go through stuff too we don't have it all figured out it might look that way and we might put on a very good face but that's not always the truth and we sometimes all we need is an encouraging word sometimes all we need is a prayer sometimes judgment is not what we judgment is never what we need you know, sometimes we need a stern drape up too. You know what I mean? Sometimes that's what we need. But, you know, today, after you watch this video and stuff, and, you know, be a little bit more graceful to, to, to something that you might see, somebody that you might be around. Be a little bit more gra grace sorry, gra uh, graceful, myself? Sorry. Be a little bit more graceful to somebody around you who might be a minister and you realize that they're going through a rough time. Pray for them rather than beating them down. And ministers who are hanging on by a thread, the sacrifice is always greater. Read the Bible more, talk to God more. Period. So yeah, There's that. that's pretty much that. This video is very, 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 very long. But anywho, we did what needed to be done. So yeah guys, thanks for watching another video. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. This is... Leslie, Leslie Ann, Les Leslie Ann. This Ann. is Leslie Ann, and this is Abigail, and this is me, and we're signing out. Bye, guys.